Hello guys, this is Adip. Welcome to my channel Movement Science where I simplify biomechanics with Joe. In today's video, we are going to talk about the elbow joint articulation. We will be mainly focusing on the bones that articulate and also the movement that happens at this articulation. And in the next video, we will be talking about the capsule and the ligaments. Okay, so let's get started. So first starting with the elbow articulation, I have tried to keep it as simple as possible. Okay, so we need to new <coughs> so first we need to learn some new terminologies that is the trochlea, coronoid and olecranon. Okay, these are the three new terminologies we need to remember and once we get this, the whole concept becomes very simple. Okay, so first the ulna has the trochlear notch that is you can see over here trochlear notch over here which articulates with the humerus's trochlear groove that is present over here. I'll show it on the bone in a while, but just stay with me for some time. Then there is coronoid process, okay, that is over here, which goes into the coronoid fossa, okay. And then there is olecranon process, which goes into the olecranon fossa, simple, right? Everything goes together really well. And then we have the radius, and radius has a head over here, see? the head of the radius which goes into the radial fossa over here. So basically the humerus accepts different parts of ulna and that's how the articulation happens. Now let us look at this on an actual bone. So over here we'll first start with your humerus okay. So this over here is the trochlear part and if I remove this you can see there is a groove between right which divides the trochlea into medial and lateral part. See humerus, this is the uh, head, right? So this is the inner part, this is the medial and the lateral part of the trochlea and there is a groove in between. And then at the side, this spherical thing you can see is the capitulum. Just above capitulum, the fossa that is present is the radial fossa and over here, there is another fossa that is present like a hole that is your coronoid fossa where the coronoid process will come okay and then if you turn posteriorly there is another fossa over here the olecranon process will come so that is the olecranon fossa so that is your humerus okay now if you look at the ulna this is your trochlea again it has a medial and lateral part which will nicely articulate and this part of ulna will go behind like this and set right like this so that will form your olecranon right this is the olecranon process i'll remove this okay and then this part is your coronoid process and in between there is your trochlea so these are the major articulation and this is how the articulation happens if i remove all these things i can show you properly it just fits nicely and moves very smoothly if i can show you from this angle right the olecranon fossa will go, the olecranon process will go into the olecranon fossa. In front, the coronoid process will go into the coronoid fossa. And there is one more fossa remaining, right? And over here, that is the radial fossa. So you can see, this is the head of the radius. And the that will sit right over here during flexion. And during extension, there will be a lot of space that is left. So this is how the articulation happens. Another small thing that has to be noticed over here is you can see the trochlea, the medial part is much bigger than the lateral part, right? Between there is a groove and if you compare the both the trochlea, the medial part is bigger, which creates that angulation. If you see, if you fit the ulna in over here, right, it creates this angulation because the medial pushes it slightly forward, right? So there is this angulation that is seen at the elbow joint because of this structure. So now that you have understood how the articulation happens, now what is the movement that happens at this articulation? So if you take this as your ulna and this as your humerus, the sliding motion is seen at your elbow joint. So let's have a look at that. So as I mentioned, you can see there is a sliding motion that occurs of the trochlear ridge, okay? Trochlear ridge was this area, right? On the groove, that is the trochlear groove. So over here, that is the trochlear groove and the sliding motion is how the movement happens at the elbow. 
so let's have a look at this on the bones so now that we know the articulating surfaces over here what is the movement that is happening there is a sliding movement that is happening between your trochlear ridge and the trochlear groove over here right so they sit and then there is the sliding movement at the end of extension the olecranon process will go into the olecranon groove over here and at the end of flexion the coronoid process will go into the coronoid fossa over here right olecranon fossa and the coronoid fossa that's how the movement will happen and the radius on the other side during flexion will go into the radial fossa right the radial head and during extension it won't be in contact with the humerus so that's how the major articulation happens at the elbow joint okay so now that we have understood how the movement exactly occurs at the elbow joint along with the articulation let's summarize the topic so what did we see under articulation we came across three different terms that is the trochlea coronoid and olecranon the trochlear notch goes into the trochlear groove coronoid process into the coronoid fossa and olecranon process into the olecranon fossa of the humerus right and apart from that there is the head of the radius which articulates with the radial fossa at the end of the motion so with that we finish up this topic in next video i will be covering the capsule and the ligaments so stay tuned for that and thank you for watching